Being overprepared is impossible in other matters. By Please Dial 123. Chapter 9. Wave Days. Do you know anyone around who knows how to teach music and may be interested in making cash? Kakashi asks Tsunami on the second day in their home. She stepped back, startled at his sudden appearance, but rallied quick enough. Katsuya may be interested. He was a local performer until... Well, he lives alone out in the soy field to the south. So Kakashi went and bid him a visit. The man accepted immediately with an air of desperation, and Kakashi decided to trust him and paid him in advance. Kakashi then had to tactfully ignore the tears in the man's eyes as Kakashi handed him cash and half paid him in a bag of rice. He had already gotten a sense of how desperate the people here were. The fact a man was nearly crying over a bag of rice was far more real, though, and Kakashi strategically retreated. That night, Kakashi sent his three students off under the cover of nightfall with their sealed instruments and instructions to be good. He was more than fine to watch the family on his own for a few hours as his students got real lessons. The fact that it helped calm them down and give them something to focus on outside of training and the run-down air of the place was a bonus. This is what poverty looks like, Kakashi said lowly. Sasuke and Sagara were looking around with wide, shocked eyes at the hollow-eyed people watching them back. Sakura is from a well-to-do family, and Sasuke had been a part of a clan where something like this would never happen to an individual. His two students kept very close, as if almost scared of how to respond in the face of desolation. Kakashi kept his head high and wasn't afraid to meet people's gaze, giving acknowledging head tilts to the few who lingered. They followed Tazuna into what was a grocery store when it was fully stocked. Now it held some sad-looking vegetables and a few dented tins of food. Kakashi noted the way Tazuna's eyes darted to them, and then the way he weighed his coin pouch. "'We will find our own meals,' Kakashi told the man simply, watching as Sakura gave some beaten-down kid a candy from her pocket. Tazuna nodded, relief clear in his face, as he paid an abhorrent amount for a small bag. Where did the blonde brat go? He blustered as they stepped out onto the street. A few streets over, I think, Kakashi said. We'll collect him on the way out of town. I have nothing else to get. Tazana shook his head. Kakashi nodded and led them down an alley, a street, around a corner, and then into a narrow street with a line of doors. Naruto was sitting on a stoop talking animatedly at a lady sitting beside him. The woman, thin and hollowed like every other villager, looked much more lively as she laughed. Naruto grinned at her and then spotted them and gave a short wave. Kakashi watched and saw only a brief flicker of movement as Naruto tucked a stack of coins in the woman's hand. She frowned, tried to slip them back in his pocket, and he merely danced back, giving a wave before he fell in between Sakura and Sasuke. How is that? Sakura asked, peering after the woman. A prostitute! Naruto said, I hesitate. Kakashi watched as his other two students reared away from Naruto in surprise. You live near the flower district back in Kanaha, don't you, Naruto? Kakashi asked offhand. Yep! Naruto smiled. The girls there were super nice. Well, I mean, some are. They would let me sit in the kitchen and give me scraps if I was real quiet. Sangara and Sasuke are looking at him in horror as if trying to understand that little blonde Naruto sat at the feet of whores and broke bread with them. And you thanked them, right? Kakashi said, slightly scolding. Of course! Naruto scoffed. I know my manners when I need them! Good boy! Kakashi ruffled his hair. Naruto looked at the people around them and saw familiar-looking nightmares. Poverty, starvation, fear. Naruto had grown up in the slums. So close to this sort of thing, he looked around with familiar eyes. Kakashi could see how hard it was for Sakura and Sasuke to accept this. Perhaps they might learn something from this. Here, Kakashi said, couching beside Sakura. Watch closely. She watched with sharp eyes and a single-minded focus he found startling sometimes. Ever since she had decided she was not going to be a liability to her team or fall behind the boys, she had been focused. At least it made her a tad calmer than the boys. That looks like a water jutsu. She said, picking apart the hand signs and meanings. It is, Kakashi agreed, happy that she could break down something like this so quick. 
She was such a quick, smart student. He was sure she could give any Nara a rub of the money. He showed her one more time and then had her practice the symbols until they were smooth. I lifted it off of Azabaza during our scrap. He told her cheerfully, "The water dragon one." Sakura realized quickly. Yes, very good for dragons. And he prompted, "And if I can learn it, I might be able to change it into smaller forms, maybe something other than a dragon." Sakura jumped in, or maybe even shape it into a. Well, I guess I could do a lot with it since it's for manipulation of water, in theory, at least. He ruffled her hair, and she took it without a frown. They had started to realize that was his way of showing his pride and praise. They had started to accept that actions happily, waving at him. Go back to under the bridge, within yelling distance, of course. Sakura smiled and cheerfully threw herself off the bridge to the horrified shouts of the civilians. Their startled gasps, which he landed ninja jump please on the surface of the water, reminded him how little civilians truly knew of ninja. Sasuke had cast a glance their way when he heard the scream, eyes searching for a threat. But when he found no such thing, he turned back to the group he was working with. Sasuke was apparently a large help with the welding. He was used to working with flame, and since he could walk up any surface, he could work anywhere at any angle. He had also made them all gasp in amazement when they realized he needed no welding torch and could instead breathe out white hot flame. Since Kakashi didn't want him wasting chakra, he only did it sparingly for jobs too large for the torch to be convenient. Naruto, on the other hand, was running around carrying things. He had about ten clones doing the same, all of them fetching tools and keeping an eye on workers who were working at heights or in harnesses. Since Naruto was stronger than even the strongest civilian man here, he was often asked to carry heavy supplies with his clones or hold things in place as others worked. Sakura had been the lookout while the boys worked before he sent her off. His team was doing a fantastic job. They were in fact speeding up the building time, and Tazuna admitted things were moving forward at a fast pace, despite the fact their crew was so small. I don't understand," Sasuke growled, frustrated one day, eyes glinting and fist clenched. "Don't understand what?" Kakashi asked lightly. "How?" he demanded, pointing at Naruto accusingly. "How what, Sasuke?" Kakashi repeated, "You need to use your words." How is he so terrible at taijutsu form yet so good at it? Sasuke growled. And how does Sakura have harder hits than me? They were both losers in school. Sakura shot up a nasty glare, but didn't pull away from where she was waist deep in the water, a fishing net in her hands. Naruto sulked across from Sasuke, his knuckles bloody from where he had smashed them against Sasuke's nose. While Kakashi didn't like them to bloody one another, sometimes Naruto's style was too unpredictable to completely avoid injury. How long have you been practicing the Uchiha cold fire style? Kakashi asked idly, watching as Sakura cast her net. Since I was four, Sasuke growled. And when did you practice? I did it in the family dojo, Sasuke said, crossing his arms. Did you ever spar? Once in a while, not after the. Sasuke trailed off, looking at the ground angrily. And how long have you been wrestling, Naruto? Kakashi looked to his blonde student. I don't know. Naruto said, scratching his cheek. All my life, I guess. Why? Well, the other orphans like to steal my stuff. Naruto shrugged. And then when I moved out, some people thought they could paint my door or destroy my stuff, so I fought them. He shrugged in a sort of matter-of-fact way, unaware of Sasuke and Sakura turning incredulous looks on him. See, Sasuke. Kakashi asked, "If it were a competition of form, you would win hands down. But in a spar, it's a matter of instincts, and Naruto's have been honed in more dangerous situations than yours." And Sakura, Sasuke asked, still angry. She has perfect chakra control. Kakashi said, even unknowingly, she's been using chakra to enhance her strikes. It helps grow the muscle harder and makes her hits harder. Just like every child who learns how to channel chakra starts to unconsciously channel it, making them stronger and faster than any civilian will be able to be. You can all jump house high now, even without chakra, because of this. She just has the fine control to do it for her muscles in a fight. Sasuke, in the face of logic, kicked to the ground angrily. There is always going to be someone better than you, Sasuke. Kakashi said with a sharp voice. Maybe not in everything, but in something at least. 
Instead of finding fault in yourself and your teammates, you should think of how to work your strengths together until, as a team, you have no weaknesses. Sasuke muttered something and stomped off. Naruto went to go after him, but Kakashi held up a hand, stopping him. Go help, Sakura. If you walk out farther, you can get larger fish. Naruto looked after Sasuke and then at Kakashi before nodding and plotting out to join Sakura and catching dinner. Kakashi went after Sasuke and found him curled up at the base of a tree, face in his knees. Sasuke, he said, crouching beside the boy. Why does this bother you? You should understand you can't be the best at everything and that your teammates will grow. They won't be the same people you attended the academy with forever. Sasuke seemed like he was going to ignore Kakashi, and Kakashi hunkered down ready to wait him out when finally the boy looked up, dark eyes look at Kakashi with a suspicious wetness to them. That man told me I had to be strong, that caring is a weakness, that teams are a weakness that will hold me back. And you're going to listen to him? Kakashi asked. Tell me, Sasuke, if you went after him and somehow got poisoned, what would you do? Sasuke said nothing. Now, if, say, Sakura was with you, do you think you would be better off? Or say you ran into a problem that needed an application of traps? Would Naruto be a weakness there? No. Sasuke finally relented. Sasuke, teams can be a weakness in only one way, Kakashi said. They can make you vulnerable because you care. That is true. But the benefits far outweigh the risks. Kanaha has only sent out shinobi in teams since its founding for a reason. Sasuke breathed heavily through his nose. You do realize that if you ask, we will all help you face Itachi, Kakashi said gently, resting a hand on Sasuke's head. Sasuke flinched at the man's name and looked wildly up at Kakashi. No, he blurted out, he'll kill you. I don't mean now, Kakashi said gently, but if we train... One day in the future, I'm sure a team as strong as us can even deal with an S-class missing in. We are a team, Sasuke. We will have your back. Sasuke still looked a tad panicked by the idea, but Kakashi felt him slowly relax under his hand. You aren't alone anymore, Sasuke, Kakashi hummed. Sasuke stayed quiet and Kakashi merely sat with him. When Sakura and Naruto came looking, two large fish in their hands, they had ready smiles for Sasuke, who cautiously peeked up at them. Their good cheer pulled him from his mood, and it was a happy team that returned to Tasuna's with dinner. And if Sasuke's eyes lingered on his teammates, Kakashi merely smiled encouragingly. Kakashi had been ignoring the Inari problem. The little boy was a sulking mess and still a little too young to let things like logic work against what he thought was the truth. Kakashi also didn't care for any kids but his own, and this one was not his problem. Luckily, or maybe unluckily for Inari, Naruto wouldn't let the argument go and butted heads with the boy the entirety of their stay. Even Sasuke seemed annoyed at the child and Sagara frustrated. Kakashi let them fight like kids, arguing over the dinner table. Either they would convince the boy and feel accomplished, or they wouldn't, and they would learn sometimes you couldn't change people's minds. And if the kid drove Naruto to frustration, which drove Naruto to work those frustrations out with extra training, well, Kakashi couldn't find any fault there. It was good to be motivated and learn how to work out frustration in a healthier manner. Weave it under like this, Tsunami said gently. Naruto scowled at the material, tongue peeking out of his teeth as he scratched his nose in concentration. His hands fumbled, more used to the handle of a kunai than a needle. But he seemed to get it. Good job, Tsunami praised. Naruto brightened like the sun, whole face lighting up under the warm praise. Miss Tsunami, what do I add next? Sakura called. Keep practicing that row of stitches, Tsunami told Naruto before retreating to the kitchen to help show Sakura the recipe. Those are looking quite tidy. Good job, Kakashi said, appearing at the small cross-stitching on the material. Yeah! Naruto grinned. Now my clothes won't look so terrible! Your stitching did leave much to be desired, Kakashi said dryly, remembering the terrible way Naruto had batched some rips before. He would never trust the boy to sew someone up, but he was improving. Naruto was doing well under a calm, gentle manner, like Tsunami's, who had endless patience and a careful hand with children. Naruto had never had a mother figure in his life, and he flourished under the guidance. Kakashi was trying to think of anyone who could possibly step up to that plate back in Kanaha. Naruto needed a calm influence in his life that Kakashi couldn't always afford to be. 
Maybe a talk with that Academy sensei of his. Sakura was often in the kitchen helping Tsunami cook. Sasuke, a silent shadow behind her. The boy acted indifferent, but Kakashi had noticed his careful looks. He doubted the boy knew how to cook much and made a note to look into his living arrangement when they got back to Kana. He had already seen Naruto's. We're going to do some lessons after dinner, Kakashi announced after a thought. Do any of you know anything about finances and accounting? My father sometimes gets me to help calculate his books for them, Sakura piped in. I gotta manage my allowance, Naruto shrugged. Sasuke didn't answer, but gave a shrug. We'll talk about personal finances, and maybe even a bit about a larger network like Sue Waves. Kakashi smiled. Maybe Tsunami can help and teach us about households. I'd be happy to. Tsunami smiled from the kitchen. She was a grateful woman, grateful for the return of her father safely, grateful for the help the kids gave in repairs around the property, grateful for the fact they kept bringing fish and game home for dinner, grateful for sharing extra rations they had tucked away. She was a good influence on the kids, and so Kakashi took advantage of the gratefulness in little lessons.